How's it going everybody? Welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH After Show. I hope you guys all had a wonderful Christmas yesterday. I know that I did. And by the way, thank you guys so much if you guys tuned in to the live stream on Wednesday when we were watching some more classic Christmas episodes of GH. Stay tuned at the end of this video to find out what we're watching this Wednesday. But for now, let's get into what happened in Port Charles this Christmas. Laura was on her way back to Port Charles, but not before she made a pit stop to confront her brother Cyrus in jail. And I freaking love those scenes. Basically, Cyrus was claiming that he had found God and Laura was cracking up and I was cracking up and Laura cracking up. It was just so fun to watch. Jeannie and Jeff play so well off of each other. I loved those scenes and you could tell they were having a good time uh, playing those scenes as well. The thing is, despite the fact that most of what Cyrus saying was complete bullshit, the one thing that he was adamant on was that he did not attempt to kill Martin in that safe house. And this week we found out that he wasn't lying. It was actually Victor Castadine who went after Martin just to draw Laura out of hiding. For whatever reason, this show is really trying to sell Laura and Victor as like these arch nemesis type of enemies and that's really not the case. I mean they haven't interacted at all since the 80s during the Ice Princess storyline and even back then Luke and Laura barely had him on the radar. It was all about Mikos Cassidyne. This show has Laura talking about Victor as if he's been wreaking havoc on her family for decades but realistically he went to jail in the 80s and was in jail for decades and even when he got out he wasn't about Laura or her family in the slightest it was all about Robin and Jason and Obrecht and trying to figure out if Nathan was his son or not the last time he was in town. So they have not interacted at all. He's barely cared about the Spencer family whatsoever. I'm not saying that Laura doesn't have a right to be worried about Victor, but I just don't understand where this is coming from. Anyway, when Laura first got back to town, I believe it was Christmas Eve in Port Charles. It's kind of hard to figure out what day was what this week. But essentially, you know, the Christmas party for children at the hospital was happening the day that she got back, so let's just assume. Kevin was actually Santa during this party, and he was so surprised and overwhelmed to see his wife back in town that he really said, F them kids. Thankfully, Laura had a stand-in, Martin. And by the way, for some reason, Lucy was in charge of this party, and she didn't notice the switch of the Santa Clauses, but we really need to address the situation because... She knew that Laura was back, and she proceeded to go sit on Santa's lap and flirt with him, despite that, thinking it was Kevin. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, why, what? Like, I know that we've barely seen Lucy this year because we didn't get a nurse's ball at all, which kind of sucks, by the way. But anyway, like, it just, it just feels like they threw all her character development from the last, like, 10 years out the window like this th Lucy wouldn't do that and like try to make a pass on Kevin at this point You know what I mean? Especially knowing that he's happily married to Laura I mean, maybe if Laura wasn't back in town, but she had seen Laura there greeting her husband So like I just I, I don't like this at all, but on the plus side she was down for Martin, and that is a couple that I didn't know I needed. Martin basically took her out for dinner and drinks, and then they woke up at the Metro Court in bed together, and they had a shameless walk of shame into the Metro Court restaurant while Laura was there with Kevin, and those scenes were hilarious as well. Anyway, back to Laura. Now, Laura also had to reintroduce herself to the citizens of Port Charles on top of her family, and I'm actually surprised that Port Charles remembered her considering she's been MIA forever as the mayor of Port Charles. This woman has been out of town for most of her tenure as mayor in Port Charles. This is, it's, it's truly ridiculous, but you know, she's welcome back with open arms, so it is what it is. All right, now let's talk about Spencer Cassidyne. So things are still hella awkward between him and Nicholas and Ava, and Victor is taking full advantage of that and taking him under his wing, even going so far as to pulling some strings to make sure that his criminal charges have less consequences. All Spencer has to do is plead guilty and he'll only get a month inside Spring Ridge, which is the jail that Alexis spent time in, which was more like a day spa where everyone can just kind of walk around and hang out. Also, he won't feel that isolated because Esme is interning there as well, so it, it's like... He was initially like kind of mad that he'd still have to do jail time, but it's like, really dude? Really? And speaking of Esme, this girl goes over to Cameron's house and visits him and Jocelyn and says that she wants to up the timing of the trip and have like a real send off for Spencer, even though it's only going to be like a month. They agreed to do it reluctantly, although Jocelyn seems to have something up her sleeve. 
and Esme goes to Spencer's at Kelly's to give him the good news and walks in on a moment between Trina and Spencer where they're like holding on to each other's hands and staring longingly into each other's eyes. That girl looked like she was ready to kill. You better watch out, Trina. I say this every time you interact with Esme, but girl, you in trouble. Of course, those famous last words kick in, this will be a weekend to remember. I, I, I can only imagine what's gonna happen. I can already tell this trip is gonna be a complete disaster. And speaking of disasters, let's talk about the Corinthos clan. Now, before we talk about the mess that is Sunny and Nina, we gotta talk about the grieving parents, Sasha and Brando. They are checking out of the hospital and Gladys thinks it's a great idea to bring them over to the Corinthos house on, I forget if it was Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but basically she brings them over there as a surprise and of course they're very comforting towards Sasha and Brando, but I don't know, like I, they seemed okay with being there, but if it were me and I just lost, you know, my child and I was checking out of the hospital, the only thing that I would want to do is just go home and be by myself with my thoughts and just let myself grieve. Like, it, it just felt weird that they went there and weren't all that mad about it. At one point, Carly gives Sasha a hug and says, you know, I heard that you feel like you don't have family, but you have our family now. And I'm like, girl, that ain't comforting in the least. <laughs> like, everybody knows what goes on in the Corinthos family. Like, no one wants to be a part of that. I mean, the Corinthos clan are all freaking out over the fact that Nina dropped off a present for Wiley to the guard. She didn't even go near them, but they were still just so riled up about it. Like, don't get me wrong, they have every right to be mad at Nina, but like, she's just dropping off a gift for her grandson and respectfully stayed away from the house while doing it. Maxi and Obrecht, of course, are on Nina's side and they spend Christmas with her as well. And Obrecht thinks that Willow could be the key to letting her visit with Wiley. But of course, as you guys know, Willow knows the truth about Sunny and Nina, so she's not exactly in her good graces. She doesn't mention that to Obrecht, but Obrecht figures it out pretty quickly on her own and tells Scott about it and says, maybe Willow is the key to having Nina get out of these charges. And of course, Scott plans on bringing that up in the hearing that happens the next day but the the situation is that he can't call anyone to the stand so basically what happened was the DA of Pennsylvania basically brings her up for a contrived reason because Scott accuses him of taking a bribery from Michael and Willow and for some reason Willow is the one that that DA decides to bring on screen the only explanation I can have is to have it be the ridiculous plot point that gets the truth out of Willow. Just a straight up lazy plot point that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Good job writers! Let's talk about the cues. Now Brooklyn gets a visit from Valentine and Charlotte who is now being played by someone else and I initially thought that it was going to be like an aging thing with, with, uh, with Charlotte but she seems to be the exact same age. No one really knows the reason why Scarlett's no, uh, no longer on the show. She did make a post saying that she enjoyed her time in GH. There's some speculation that she and her family moved to a different state, so I mean that seems like a good enough reason. But this girl is like super shy and awkward, not at all a demon child, and she's actually really sweet too. I mean, I don't know, it could just be like it's her first day and she was kind of nervous, but she was so sweet. She didn't care that Bailey wasn't her sister anymore, since obviously Valentine told her the truth. And she brought her a gift anyway, and she was just like this meek, you know, shy little thing. It was weird. I like calling Charlotte a demon child. How dare you take that away from me? Anyway, by the end of their visit, Brooklyn was actually saying that she did what she did to protect Bailey, and of course Valentine is wondering why, but she practically pushes him out the door after he asks that question, so... I mean, I do hope that Valentine finds out the truth soon, because it sucks that he's grieving for this girl and thinks that he was completely screwed over for Brooklyn, but when he knows all the reasons behind what she did, I think he'll be a bit more receptive to her in the future. I think it's safe to say that most of the audience at this point feels like Valentine would have protected Bailey and pretended to be that little girl's father if Brooklyn was just honest with him because he feels guilty about his role in the man that Peter has become. But no, they did this convoluted mess of making Chase the father instead. It was, uh, it's just so ridiculous to me. All right, let's talk about Drew. Now he is settling back into his life in Port Charles. He's having some great moments with, with Scout and reuniting with all of his friends. And he actually reunites with Elizabeth as well. And they talk about Jason's death and Franco's death and about Elizabeth's potential new love interest Finn. Here's the thing. Now, while Drew and Elizabeth are talking about the potential relationship between her and Finn, Drew says something to the effect of, like, 
I was lucky enough to know what it feels to be loved by you, and Finn would be an idiot for passing up the chance, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, listen, I know, I know that Drew and Elizabeth got past what she did during their relationship, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. She spent most of that relationship lying to him, or at the very least, keeping from him what she and everyone believed to be the truth. Like, that wasn't love, that was desperation, y'all. I'm just getting really tired of the pattern of hearing these characters say things that we know aren't the case. Like, we watched the show, you know, writers. We've been here for quite some time, most of us, you know, for decades now. We know the history, and when you change it a little bit, we notice. Oh, by the way, speaking of inconsistencies, we learn of an off-screen tradition that apparently takes place at GH on Christmas Day. Apparently, they bring in musical guests to sing in the hallways, and thankfully, the town has a new clarinet player, so of course, he was there to play while Epiphany sings. It feels like the show is trying to do a chemistry test between Epiphany and Marshall, and honestly, I don't hate it. Milo's not on the show anymore, they broke up, and she needs some new love in her life. Of course, Curtis was there to see him in action and gave his nod of approval. You know what I see happening? I feel like Curtis is going to let his guard down, and that's when he's going to learn why Marshall was hidden all these years, and it's going to be blown all to hell for him. Do you guys agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the only other thing worth noting is that this week, Sean announced that he is now the new publisher of The Invader, because apparently you can just become a publisher after being in jail for many years. <laughs> like, I, oh, this show, man. This show this week has given me so many inconsistencies and like weird plots that I, I just found the whole week jarring. Like apparently his plan is to turn the invader into something respectful. We'll see how he does with that. I don't know, but it's just like, what? I'm so confused. But meh, I guess Sean found his calling and Alexis is still searching for hers. Maybe that was the point of this. But yeah, that was my thoughts and feelings of the show this week. I know it was mostly negative, but you know, it happens. It is what it is. But it's also the last General Hospital after show of the year. We made it to the end of the year, guys. However, there is going to be a live stream this Wednesday for GHMV Reacts, the other show. We are actually gonna be watching a really cool classic New Year's episode of General Hospital where they go back in time and we learn of a very mobster-esque story that happened in Port Charles. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, before I let you guys go, I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for tuning in all year. I've had such a blast with you guys. Uh, the live streams that we've been doing the last few weeks have also been just so much fun. Getting to interact with you guys, not only in the live chat like we do on Sundays, but also on screen when I can talk back and forth with you guys. It's really been making a lot of my nights, especially the last few weeks. It's, you know, this time of year is a bit hard, right? And having you guys there, it's just, it's made my night a lot of nights, even when we're just hanging out and talking about random stuff, not even GH, it's just, it's just been a lot of fun. And I thank you guys so much for that. I hope some more of you do join into the live streams in the future because we got a lot of them coming up. Jeez, my voice cracked there. I better not get emotional. I better end it here. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next year. Peace out.